Well, it appears the Supreme Court is poised to keep former President Donald Trump on the Colorado ballot. Professor Stephen Caliendo with North Central College joins us now. Class is in session. Good afternoon, Professor. Good afternoon to both of you. I hope you were geeking out as much as I was today. <laughs> it's very been exciting. Very interesting, right? Uh, so it appears during the arguments today, both conservative and liberal judges are showing some concerns over allowing just one state to disqualify a leading candidate. Uh, th does this surprise you at all? No, that's exactly what I expected to happen. Um, you know, of course, I know lots of folks, I hope lots of folks tuned in. It's, a, it's an important civics lesson and opportunity today. Uh, but if you tuned in hoping that the court would be arguing the merits of whether Donald Trump participated in an insurrection mm -hmm. or didn't, uh, that's not that's not what you were going to get, and that's certainly not what we got. M lots of talk about uh, the the folks who drafted that the Fourteenth Amendment, what that what that um, what the third clause, what the third section means, and then lots of history. Uh, and so I think we're we're going in the direction that uh, this is not going to be up to individual states. Uh, but it'll probably be a narrowly written decision to leave some room in case a federal court wanted to weigh in. Okay, so what exactly is the biggest issue or argument against keeping Trump off the ballot? What are we hearing? Well, because, it, I mean, there's lots of uh, nuanced things in, in terms of whether or not the president is considered an officer, the way that that language was drafted. But really, I would say that the nuts and bolts here is, can individual states make this determination for an office that is that is serving the entire country. Mm -hmm. So it's different when you're talking about senators, when you're talking about House members. They're certainly national officers as well, but they're representing individual states. In this case, though, you have an individual state, or, or you know maybe several states as, as the weeks would go on, uh, were trying to keep a presidential candidate off the ballot, and it didn't seem to me like the justices were going to be in favor of that. I wouldn't be surprised if we get a unanimous decision. In fact, on that on that part. All right. We heard from uh, Trump earlier today as well. Uh, he said he did not incite any violence. In fact, he blamed the insurrection on Nancy Pelosi. So he's buckling down uh, in just about every situation, right, where he's accused of wrongdoing. But I got to ask you, are all these legal issues actually helping and not hurting his campaign? Well, to this point, Terrence, that's correct. I mean, I think your assessment is spot on. Uh, remember that we're in the primary phase now. We're in the, we're in the nomination phase now. So what he has to do is impress uh, conservatives and press uh, Republicans. He's certainly done that uh, very, very well in the early contests, and it looks like he will continue to do that. Uh, the question comes, though, when we get to uh, the, the, the election in November, where, of course, we elect as a result of the Electoral College. So there'll be eight or nine key states, and what are independents going to do there? What are folks in the suburbs going to do there? Um, it's, it's a very different question. And, of course, we'll know a lot more how some of these cases play out uh, by the time we get to November. Uh, so there's lots, lots to be determined between then and now. It's Professor Stephen Caliendo, glad we could drag you away from geeking out over the TV today. <laughs> we appreciate you breaking this down for us. As always, you do such a great job. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia and Terrence. Take care. All right, you too. Well, let's check in with uh, Emily now. Busy day for you guys in the Weather Center. Yeah, things are just kind of starting to get going here further off to our western or southwest. We're